Let's talk about the amplification of strain gauge voltages and ADCs. So first I'm going to go into the current setup and how it's wired and how it works. And then I'll explain some of the issues with it. So start with we have the Arduino there, the uh, amplifier and the Wheatstone bridge. So to power this, we're using a two cell lithium ion or lithium polymer battery, one or the other, doesn't really matter. And so we're gonna power the Arduino through its V in pin, and we're also gonna power the amplifier. And that ensures that we always get at least five volts on the output, so we can maximize the output from the amplifier. Then the Arduino itself provides the 5 volts to give the excitation voltage to the Wheatstone bridge. So we take that from there. That gives a relatively stable um, 5 volts. And I'll explain later why that's uh, quite important. Um, then we have the connection to the amplifier and that's where we use resistors to set the gain so we have two resistors here and they are low value resistors and then we have another two here between the output and zero volts or ground. So the high value. Um, and then we have connections here going to the actual amplifier. And then we've got the output comes from here. And then we're going to read that with the Arduino's ADC, which is A0. This setup does actually work. Um, despite you know, all its um, issues, but it does rely on this Arduino here being the same. So what we've got here is a situation where you have to fine tune the input here because this amplifier is looking at a very small voltage range. It's around just a few millivolts. So the issue is I often to to get this amplifier to actually see any um, output from this Wheatstone bridge, we have to stick a resistor across here sometimes to get the output here, the right voltage, and work within the right range for the amplifier to put out its voltage within you know, 0 to 5 so that this Arduino can read it. Now the issue with this is that the output of the Wheatstone bridge is highly dependent on this excitation voltage, this 5 volts. So of course if I swap the Arduino, you might get a slightly different voltage. And so the output from the Wheatstone bridge goes out of where the amplifier can see it and amplify it. So you don't have to change this resistor here. The problem with that is that I want to waterproof and seal in everything beyond here. So I could still change the Arduino, but I want all this to be sealed and I don't need to get to it. So my plan was to use, for start, we've got the VREF pin here on the Arduino, so you could feed in, I was going to feed in a um, regulated voltage of say 3.3 volts or even lower or maybe even one and a half so that's basically the voltage reference that the ADC uses I was also going to then put another regulator on the 5 volts here so to drop that down to say half um, so two and a half volts so that would obviously mean less output from the Wheatstone bridge um, but it would mean also 
we could lower the um, voltage range of the ADC so measure between say 0 to 1.5 or 0 to 2 volts or something like that um, so it wouldn't matter so much if the, the amplifier put out less voltage um, but I soon came across issues when I tried to use half the excitation voltage here I came across issues trying to get this balanced up so that I could actually read anything and it's all to do with common mode voltages um, which is basically because this point here is ground that's at say 5 volts these points here will be at 2.5 volts or half this voltage obviously there's a slight difference between the two sides here which is what we're obviously amplifying I'm not that sure about common mode voltages and how you deal with them with amplifiers but basically some of that voltage gets amplified and so the result here is at the Arduino's ADC we're probably measuring I can't remember exactly it goes from about half a volt up to five not zero to five I then attempted to create this circuit but my lack of knowledge and precision resistors meant I didn't really get very far with it and so the HX711 was just too tempting. I'm going to try and explain why an HX711 ADC is so much easier to use. So supposing we have the output of the Wheatstone bridge is a range of like 2 millivolts. Now our amplifier setup has a range it can read of only around 2 millivolts as well. So supposing we mess around with the excitation voltage and this suddenly ends up up here somewhere. Well the amplifier is then going to be out of range. It's not going to be able to read anything and we're going to have to bring that back down again by rebalancing the Wheatstone bridge. The HX711 on the other hand has a huge range it can be as much as plus or minus 80 millivolts depending on what channel you use so it means suddenly we have 160 millivolts so that means it doesn't matter if this ends up up here somewhere we can still read it the other huge advantage is that the Arduino's ADC is only a 10 bit so that means it divides the 0 to 5 volts into only 1024 steps whereas the HX711 can divide it up into 16 million steps so the result of that is that I can basically throw away a lot of that resolution I'm dividing it by a hundred and still get a better resolution for the power meter it's around 10 15 grams instead of 120 to 150 grams I was getting with the Arduino's ADC. To use a photography example of the difference between the two, supposing we want to photograph the moon, we use a optical zoom to zoom in, it's like the amplifier, and then use the Arduino's ADC, think like a very low resolution image of that. That's all fine as long as everything's lined up and stays the same. But the HX711 instead doesn't zoom in as much, but it then takes a really high resolution image of a much larger area. And that of course means that you can then find it much easier using software, for example, to find the relevant bit afterwards. And the result is about the same, but yeah, much easier to use. I very successfully modified my power meter code to work with the HX711. This is code for the Arduino Nano Every, but it also works on a typical Nano as well. So here we've got reading from the scale, and that occurs at a rate of around, it's supposed to be 80 hertz, but it's actually measured it to be 87. I wrote a piece of code to measure that. And this is used here as like the 100 hertz interrupt that I had on the previous code for measuring um, cadence, for example. 
which is this piece of code down here. So far I recorded nine rides with this latest version and the data is looking very promising indeed. It's been consistently within about 10 watts of a proper power meter. Here's the power data in the red and the blue. The blue is the homemade one, red is the Garmin pedals. And I'm pretty pleased with the results. I did have a few issues with um, spikes caused by bumps in the road. A bit of smoothing has now fixed that. Here's a bit more of an example. And this was uh, after I fixed the cadence because it was measuring a little bit too high. The um, sample rate wasn't quite what I had measured. So on 85 hertz and 87. So I've sorted that out as you probably noticed in the code. Um, so it's looking very promising indeed. The zero value on some of these rides was pretty much unchanged throughout, so, well, it wasn't very long rides, but about 40 minutes. Next step with this project, as I may have already mentioned, is to get the code onto an NRF 52832 or an 840, which is the Arduino Nano BLE. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to attempt to use this Sega Embedded Studio. At the moment, a lot of this doesn't make a great deal of sense to me, all these Ant Plus pages and so on. The entire way this coding is laid out is a bit new to me coming from the Arduino background, but I'm gradually getting there. I'm working through this incredibly helpful video series on this YouTube channel which is really helping me, and it's actually beginning to make a little bit of sense now, this uh, Sega Embedded Studio. So hopefully I will be able to get some sort of proper power meter with Ant Plus working sometime, hopefully not too far into the future. But uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.